There's the man. Hey, Shane. Hello. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. So I mean, can... work. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's about six o'clock there. So we're past it's tea time, right? Ready for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly will be afterwards. <laughs> That's all good. It's all good. So, good to uh, see you, Scott. Yeah, it's great to see you too. So, for anyone who doesn't know, um, Mr. Shane Connolly, let us know where you're located right now and um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, my goodness. What a way to start. I'm located <laughs> in the middle of Worcestershire, uh -huh. uh, countryside. Oh, washing on the line. Um, I'm 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 in the middle of nowhere, really. Uh, yeah. I'm normally in London, but I'm in Worcestershire because it's easier to be here in in lockdown. So, sure. Yeah. And delighted to be here. Wow. Very nice. What a There's beautiful no place, <laughs> huh? There's no work, that's for sure. Oh, I know. I mean, in London. Right. Well, can you kind of give us an update? Because I know some countries over there are like starting to open up and relax some of the rules. Um, yeah. How are things there? Well, I've, some flower uh, people are doing orders. They are, they're, you know, they're delivering flowers. The, 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 the people who do events like, like me yeah. are really not, there isn't anything for us to do. You know, I suppose I could do orders or something, but it's not my... It's not my strong point. I've never done it before. Um, and we don't have a delivery system set up. We don't have any of the things set up we'd need to. So I'm not doing that. Um, yeah. And I'm trying to concentrate on supporting the British flower growing industry, which I've been doing for years. But I just feel heartbroken for them now because, of course, they, they invested last year and the year before and everything for this year. So all the bulbs, the seeds, the plants, they're already paid for. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the heartbreak. Some of them are doing contactless delivery, so you can order by telephone, and they will bring you flowers, send them by courier, uh, and that that's you know that's great that some of them can do that, but it is it's very it's a very hard time. What's it like in America? Yeah, it's it's similar. I mean, you've got different areas that have different rules, which is a little yeah. frustrating, oh. um, but. <laughs> But at the same time, um, I think that there is uh, some local growers that are able to get flowers. Yeah. Uh, some of them have changed their business model to ship uh, via like FedEx or something. Right. Um, yeah. And then there's people who are able to do deliveries. Um, but like yourself, you know, there's not everyone set up to do that. And, nope. you nope. know, is it worth it? It's hard to know. But um it's it's very hard to, it's very hard to know i mean i think it's an extraordinary chance for people all of us to get in touch with nature again and certainly i have never been in my garden worcestershire is about 140 miles from london oh, okay so i've only ever been here at weekends and at weekends when i don't have an event a wedding right. party oh, that cuts out a few so i've <laughs> i've not been in my garden for 5 weeks and that's never that's never happened in my life, but not since I was eighteen. You know, wow. it's extraordinary. That's that's more than ten years as well. So it's very, uh, you know, it, it is an extraordinary opportunity. If that doesn't sound too trite to say, when the world is falling apart, to actually get in touch with nature. But it is the one thing that's keeping me um, keeping me going. Definitely, I, to I totally understand. I know. I think I even shared this on other lives that, you know, for the first time, you know, now that I'm podcasting full time, I would always be, you know, we're heavy into wedding season, holidays, things like that. There would be weeks or at least a week or two sometimes where I might not even see my, my home in daylight, you know, and, and now it's like, you know, I'm planting tomatoes. I'm planting, yeah. Yeah. I'm starting things from seed that I haven't done in a couple uh, a couple times, you know, a couple years. And so, um, yeah, it's been, it's kind of been therapeutic in a lot of ways. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's making the best of a bad bunch. And I think sure. being working with nature, you have to be optimistic because 
you know, you have to be optimistic that the bulb you plant is going to open and grow and the, the, the seed you put in is going to burst forth. And even as a florist, that the flowers you want are going to be in bloom at the right time. I've just seen there somebody saying, I did hear about the San Francisco flower market has opened again for yes. collections only. Um, so that's really interesting. Such a beautiful flower market. I, I yes. Think. Yeah, that was a big that was a big hit when they closed down because I think yeah. that was one of the first big ones to just shut down. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was that's crazy, but yeah, it is nice. I mean, that's the one thing I will say is you know we're seeing flowers beginning to move again. Yeah. Um, you know they've tried to do a little bit throughout the time, but I mean, and they have managed. Some have managed to stay open, but we're definitely seeing that. What about there? I mean. Because most of your the British growers, um, how do they distribute their product or sell their product? Do they go direct or do they go through a wholesaler or how does that work? A mixture. Some of the, there is a thing called flowers from the farm, which is a cooperative. And oh. the idea would be, say I wanted, I don't know, 3000 stems of white cosmos. I, you didn't offer me a cup of tea. <laughs> or is that uh, you know, I knew I figured you might be you know uh, you're ready for cocktail hour so <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> um, so flowers from the farm have been going for several years and they are cooperative for some of the smaller growers. So if I wanted a big quantity of something, one might come, one bo bucket might come from you, three buckets might come from your neighbor, five buckets might come, and they've they've been a great thing for the smaller grower. Um, because a lot of the smaller growers don't have a great uh, indestructible delivery system set up already. And I think they're the ones probably who are suffering most at this time because they're used to going to flower, farmer's markets. They're used to people like me sending a, a, a van to come and collect the flowers or them to send a van down with flowers for me. But I'm people like me aren't ordering at the moment. So right. I, think, I think they're having problems. The bigger growers in Britain are finding it, I think, probably their, their biggest struggle is who wants to buy the stuff because they do have delivery things set up. Um, you know, so for them, for them, business could be as normal, but there isn't the demand for the flowers. So it's a, it's a very tough time. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, even if you get the flowers in, do you know that you have the clients to sell them to or the people that are interested? And I think that's why here people have been doing it in small ways. But yeah. so is, is the wholesale, because I forget the name of the larger market there, the wholesale market. It's called the New Covent Garden Flower Market. Yeah. Right. Okay. In London. And, yeah. Are they open? Are they no, trying? They, they, they closed about, um, I'm going to say a month ago. Oh, wow. Uh, it might have been three weeks, but it's, it's nearly a month anyway. And some of them are d doing orders. So if, if you wanted flowers, I haven't, obviously, there's nothing for me to order flowers for. I but if you wanted flowers, you could order and then they would have them delivered to you or you could collect them, um, you know, contactlessly uh, with, 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 from the parking lot, basically like they're doing in San Francisco. Sure. But, you know, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't pay the bills. That's basically them being very good to us consumers. Uh, yeah. You know, very tough, very tough. Well, it's like I've said, you know, if, if you're able in any, any small way to keep flowers moving, uh, are flowing, you know, yeah. on a wholesale level or retail level, I think it's going to be easier for people to start up. I mean, that's not the wedding and event business, but it's, it's definitely the retail side of it. Do you, um, have you, as, huh? I saw Mabel. Hello, Mabel. Hey, Sorry, yeah. it's, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. So, um, do you, um, uh, I mean, I don't know how many weddings at this point you do on an average. I know, if you have bigger weddings, you may not do as many. Um, but has everything been rescheduled or postponed or canceled? We, or? Have, we, the, the, we have nothing in our diary at all. Everything was postponed, stroke, canceled uh, three months ago. Uh, th sorry, three weeks ago, a month ago. We yeah. have, we, at the moment, we've got one or two things in September, which haven't been postponed yet. But okay. the problem isn't that when things are going to go back to normal, social distancing might have to be in place for a year. Oh, and, wow. you know, every party we do is actually uh, not very good for social dis distancing. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, um, it's a very strange place to find yourself in. Sure. Very strange. Um, but, uh, if, I mean, in a way, there are so many more important businesses suffering than the flower business. 
that you feel bad saying it, but I do, I do still feel that this connection with nature is something we have such a need for at this time. It's the only thing that can bring comfort. Just, just yeah. watch seeds grow, watching plants grow. I'm so sure of it. And getting your hands in soil, and you know, they have found that there are antibiotics, for want of a better word, in soil, which are good for us. Oh. And it's, you know, I just feel it's so easy to talk when you've got a garden like you have and I have, but, you know, you can grow things in a pot as well. Just get something growing and you will feel better, is what I'm, I'm saying all the time. I've become, a, I've become a broken record. Well, but I mean, the thing is, is it's like, I mean, on my property, it's hard because um, we're near a lot of what you call like a wet weather spring. So okay. I, I can literally dig 12 inches and it's water. And wow. so we, we live near a lake. And so it's kind of, it's, it's the water table's high. And so, yeah. but right now, if you saw my drive, I've got like five tomato plants. I've started cucumbers and squash. I started zinnias and marigolds, but I mean, and, and all for containers, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and it's like, but that's, <laughs> if that's all you have, there's, I mean, embrace it and enjoy it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know what's giving me, so have you heard of someone called Sarah Raven? Sarah yes. Raven, yeah, Sarah Raven is, is, is a great advocate of gardeners and gardening and teachers. She, she can buy seeds, can buy plants. And I went strangely last October on a vegetable growing day with her. And one of the, the things that I'm going to share with you, as you say in America, that she said one of the easiest things to grow and one of the quickest things was to plant dried peas. There they are. Oh, you yeah, don't see yeah. that properly. Just, you know, normal dried peas. Uh -huh. How can I show that? In soil. Like that. There they are. Oh, wow. And within two weeks, you've got edible pea shoots. Wow. Completely delicious. For anyone who hasn't tried growing things before, I'm going to eat one live on camera. There you go. <laughs> so delicious. <laughs> if anyone has got kids out there, you can buy dried peas in grocery shops, grocery stores, as you call them. Um, you can literally a handful of soil. I'm growing that one. That one's growing in an old egg box. Oh, look at that. And within, oh, the roots are coming out the bottom. Within two weeks, three weeks tops, you have got an edible thing. And I think that's the sort of thing. I just think it was such a brilliant idea from Sarah. The box of dried peas, it costs something like, you know, $1. Well, probably ten dollars after I've given this podcast, and <laughs> it is just fantastic. You know, for kids to do that, for for adults, I've got them coming. I, they're so delicious, so cheap, so easy to do. And it, every time you go in and look at those growing, you think, "Wow, I can I can do something." It's very, it's a very simple thing, and I mean, you can harvest them probably two or three times, and then sow another set of of um, dried peas. So that's a. I have to take a glass of water now after my dried pea. That yeah. is uh, something highly recommended, highly easy to do. Now, that is that is such a great thing. And I think especially uh, we have so many parents that, you know, are homeschooling their kids because the schools yeah. are closed. Yeah. And it's a great way to learn about things. And I don't know, I, I, I think you touched on it a minute ago, but it's just the idea of when you go to put something in the soil and, and then you watch this thing, you know, emerge. And Absolutely. then... And then, you know, it, it's, it's this anticipation. It's, it's hope. I mean, it really is. Absolutely. When you go to plant that seed, you're hoping that it's going to grow and you're going to have that opportunity. And it's something, it, I don't know. I just, there's something about it. I love it. I, I completely agree. And I think it's, it's one of the little tiny things we can do at the moment that make us feel better and completely <laughs> make us, you know, it's so, it's so minimal. But my goodness, those little pea shoots are delicious. Every time I eat them, I think, wow, you know, isn't this, isn't this just the best thing I've ever done? And I wouldn't have had time to do that in, in the past 32 years. Running a business and growing pea shoots don't sort of come naturally sure. together. Yeah. So, so you know, you, let me ask a quick question. When you pinch yeah. them, um, is that it for that shoot? Or can you pinch them up high enough that they'll... You pinch them. I'm going to try to do this. Let's see if I can. I'm holding one-handed. I know. One -handed. I know. One -handed. So if you pinch the mud, leaving a little bit left, that will sprout again. Okay. And you get about three cuttings out of each tray. 
but they're so easy to do. Then you can put the whole thing on the compost heap. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely fine. So they are really good, I have to tell you. Well, they're so nutritious. Any kind of sprout yeah. like that I know. is like full of things that, you know, you miss later on down the road. So, And it's so uh, nice because gr growing a tomato on a windowsill is quite a dedicated thing to be doing if somebody only has a windowsill. But growing those, you could, honestly, you could keep yourself in fresh salad, add a lettuce or something, but you could keep yourself in fresh salad on a windowsill. So yeah. it's a, I just think they're brilliant. Yeah. I know we, we've never done this before. <clears throat> And so this is completely like a plant geek thing. So, you know, the uh, romaine lettuce. Yeah. And I've seen people do this and do this. And I'm like, okay, we're going to try this. Where after you, uh, you know, chop off the top and you have all the, the foliage to eat in your salads and things, um, taking that bottom stump, if you will, yeah. and putting that in just about an inch in, or about an inch of water, maybe half an inch of water. Uh -huh. and, um, and then all of a sudden the center it starts to sprout and I guess it takes like two weeks and you don't get a full head of lettuce but it's again one of those great things that it's kind of fun to do with the kids and you know we're, we're joking because every day we go to the windowsill and you see it's up but the bee sprouts is a great way to do that too or that you can have a whole grow a whole salad from your your windowsill yeah. Yeah. and also cut and come again I know people are finding it hard to get seed at the moment because sure. everybody's had the same idea but those dried peas are still available. They might not be. <laughs> they might not be. Oh, hello, MJ. So I've seen all these names of peas. This is lovely. Yeah, get your grandchildren on it immediately. But don't buy split peas. Dried split peas are not going to work. It has to be the whole pea. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's a, it's like a cooking show, gardening show, all yeah. in one today. This is all in great. one. <laughs> and style directions as well with your lovely shirt there, Scott. Very, <laughs> very, putting me to shame in my old... Anyway, never mind. It's all good. It's, it's all good. good. So um, I know that uh, I've enjoyed seeing some images of your garden and seeing some of the things that you have shared. Um, one of the things you've shared is a plant that I have always loved, but um, and I, I, I don't know. I can't, I don't think I grow well here because it just, it's too blazing hot to um, try to grow it. And I always destroy the pronunciation of it, but it's that premier like flower, uh, auricola, colis, I don't auricula, know auricula, auricula, premier auricula. Yeah, it's it, it, it's it's um it's supposed to look like an ear, which is Latin auricule. So auricula, yeah, okay. they're they're um they're one of my favorite things. They're just so incredible, so incredibly beautiful. Well, they have such a, I mean, they just have such a diverse color palette. It's totally um, incredible. It's, it's like they don't even look real. They, 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 they come, if you like bright colors, there are bright ones. If you like dirty, dear, dead colors <laughs> like I do, apparently, they, you've got those, the dead toenail color. They, they, <laughs> they are incredible. Striped ones. They were, you know, tulip mania. Everyone knows about tulip mania. Hello, sure. Brian. Uh, tulip mania was a big thing. But at the beginning of the 19th century and just before, auricular auricular mania it was not called that but the auriculars were absolutely extraordinarily popular and especially in poorer places up north in england for instance and they had auricular societies and they bred the most extraordinary types and colors and i just i think they're, I, they're so beautiful and the only flower for a month at the most they're not you know the for people who want all year round color they ain't the thing but my goodness when they do uh I would I would be happy with those and have nothing for the rest of the year. They're so special. It's it's you know it's like it's like do you want to just drink wine or do you want really good wine? <laughs> they are the best. They really are. So are they hardy? <laughs> what? Are they hardy? They're very hardy. I mean, I grow mine under a slight cover, uh, and so I water them. I don't let them. Um, they don't like getting very wet leaves. So okay. if you come and if you've got a very wet place, just grow them. In, in the side of a, you know, in pots. I grew them in pots. I would, I would grow them in a veranda or a stook or whatever you call them in, in, a, sure. in that part of America. And then they're fine. You just have to remember to water them. And they don't need a lot of sun and they don't need a lot of shade. They're, they're very tough. Some people grow them in the garden, literally in the, you know, just bare, really? planted in, the, in, the, in a bed. I don't do that uh, because I just think they need a bit more than that. They need a bit yeah. more uh, TLC.
Sure. Sorry, I've been distracted. I've just seen my dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. It's I know I was, I was trying to do something earlier and my dog would start barking and my kids are upstairs playing some game yelling and I'm just like, I guess I need to get a live like neon light or something so everybody knows. You know, yes. but, um, it's, it is what it is. It's so part of just connecting, you know, it's part of connecting yeah. with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, well, I've never actually spoken to you face to face. Have we ever even met? No, we haven't. It's like, it's like, well, I think when we did our interview uh, last year, it was kind of like, I've, uh, I've helped supply you with flowers in Nashville and Birmingham <laughs> and North Carolina. And, yes. and so I, I, I felt like I did, uh, you know, I have connected with you, obviously. Yeah. But no, this is the first face to face. So. <laughs> Technology. I, I might be going to Atlanta next January. Really? Yeah, if anybody's going anywhere in January, who knows? Well, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's exciting. What will you, you know what you're going to be doing? Or Oh, actually, I do know. You do know. I, I do. Know. Can we announce <laughs> that yet? Uh, well, I haven't said yes yet because <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, well, we don't know if we're going to, you know, what are we going to be allowed to fly next year? Yeah, yeah. Who we probably tell? shouldn't say what. Yeah. We shouldn't say well, what just yet. Yeah, not yet. But, uh, but you know, and I know, and we know who does know too. So there we go. Uh, but what we can we can say things like, I'm part of a scheme in England that on the 10th of May there's going to be it's got, it's going to be called Garden Day. And yeah. The idea yeah. is to encourage people to enjoy their garden or to enjoy gardens virtually, and I think that's a really important thing. I, I always get into a bit of trouble right from the when I wrote my first book. I can always remember in those days there was no such thing as Amazon or Amazon to comment. But somebody said in, in a letter to the publishers, it's all very well for Shane Connolly, but he obviously has acres of land to cut things from and doesn't rely on a flower market. And it always stung me very much because, you know, we all use flower market and we all use, can use growers. We can all use private growers. But there seems to be sometimes this bit of snobbery about garden and, you know, garden it's all very well for you you've got a garden it's all very well for you you can use flowers from a garden we all could we all could and the small growers and they are all over america as well i yes. mean i think i told you i had ever bloomfield who is here is an extraordinary grower in dallas and when i was going to dallas 2019 last year i asked um if there was a, a if there were growers and they said no there are no growers in texas and I happened, Ariella Shazar, a great friend, and I said to Ariella, you've been to, to, to Texas? And she said, yeah, there, there's a great grower there that I use. And the great grower told me about Ever Bloomfield. There are so many small growers in America and everybody can use that lovely feel of garden flowers in their work then. And, you know, I hope that's something, I know they're all struggling at the moment, but I really hope that's something that comes out of this, that people want to, and you know, you as sorry, there's a fly. I know, I know, I know. You, you as a, you as a. You, you as a, you as a, as a supplier of flowers, you can get those growers to get you things as well, can't you? Yeah, yeah. In America. Yeah. Well, it's it's, I, that is the one thing that I think has been one of the most exciting things to come out of this hard yeah. time yeah. is, you know, we're on social media, we're making connections, we're seeing other people source flowers differently. <laughs> we're learning from that. Um, you know, we're seeing small growers try to pivot and ship flowers that maybe have yeah. never shipped flowers before. Yeah. Um, into much bigger markets and moving many more flowers now. Yeah. And yeah. so, I mean, still, in the same geographical area, basically, but it's still, you know, broadening your, yeah. your, uh, your market. And I, I just feel like, I don't know, I'm, I am excited to, to see this push and to see this um, passion for keeping yeah. um, domestic flowers, no matter where you are. I know I was- Wherever, exactly. Wherever yeah, you are. I had a lovely conversation 
um, with my friend Debbie in Australia. And, you know, she was getting roses from a local grower and just selling them by the bucket, you know, on her web shop because she's just trying to help them move flowers. And they're mm. beautiful blooms. And mm. they're not fan. I mean, it, they are beautiful. They're, I mean, I'm just saying they're not like arranged. It's just literally a bucket of flowers for you to go That's home it, and yeah. do yourself. And it goes back it's to connecting. Of, it's getting back to what flowers are all about. I mean, I always, when I start talks about sustainability, um, which probably everybody here has heard me do so many times, they know exactly what I'm going to say. I always quote two things. The first, I show two photographs. The first photograph is a small bunch of withered flowers that was found in Tutankhamun's inner sarcophagus. And it was obviously put there by his wife or his mother or someone who loved him. And the other one is a photograph of dried flowers in the Guard Museum and London Press flowers, which were sent by a, a, a soldier at the front in the First World War back to his fiance. And she pressed each one. And there's something about those two flowers which exactly show what flowers are all about. And I hope by the end of this, we'll be back to that. You know, we'll have gotten away from this uh, flowers just to impress. Because there, there, there is, for me, that is not flattering to nature or to flowers. If it's just quantity. If it's just how many flowers can we fit in this church for this wedding? Or how many flowers can we fit on this table? Um, that isn't sustainable in any sense of the word. And it certainly isn't about sustainability. And that's the... That's the thing that I really, really hope comes out of all this real hardship that people, at the moment, the people who are, who are getting flowers and enjoying them are people who realize how much they miss them. It's a bit like the Prince of Wales was talking about food this week. Uh, uh, excellent. If, if any of you don't follow, follow Clarence House on Instagram. He's, he's saying such wise things, which he has been saying for 50 years, but he's saying them again. And he was just talking about food and that people are appreciating food so much because it's not as easy to get. They're realizing how hard it is to produce it. They're realizing, you know, bake your own sourdough loaf. You realize how hard it is to make a sourdough loaf. I'm doing that at the moment, just a matter of interest. But it's exactly the same with flowers. And we are getting back to why people, there is, a, it's comforting. There's something that makes you feel good. It, it's especially when they've been grown in a garden and they're organic and they're, you know, they're not covered in chemicals, which is another talk yeah. completely but just that idea that you've missed them and why have you missed them because they give you something special that connection with nature is something really special and i hope we get back to that sort of the real meaning of of having flowers right that's what i yeah. think that's my that would be great that would be great so what was that person is clarence what was his last name it's it's the prince of wales oh. <laughs> <laughs> Clarence House, it's called. Okay. Well, I wanted to make sure I had the right Instagram account, so that's all. I... Yes, you'd want to follow somebody called Clarence. Yeah. yeah, it's called Clarence House. That's his. That's his residence in in I London. Understand. And right. the Instagram account okay. is called Clarence House. <laughs> okay. That's no, no. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. America have very uh, much more familiar terms for all of the royal families, <laughs> so we have to <laughs> have to explain it. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Well, um, there we go. So, Somebody's showing it there. Clarence House at Clarence House. That's the one. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I I wanted to hear more. Okay, so you're going to be doing this uh, garden tour, virtual garden tour in a few weeks. Yeah. How can we plug into oh, that? How do we find out about that? So if you Google Garden Day, I suppose you'd have to Google Garden Day UK. Okay. It's it's an app called Candide. And Candide have come up with this idea of a day when people, I mean, they've done it, I think, for a few years, but this year they feel it's particularly important rather than saying to people, go and visit a garden near you to actually look at it virtually. Um, they've come up with the idea that we will all wear flower crowns. Well, uh, in a few days you'll see, yeah, I've, I have made a, a video at their request of me wearing a flower crown saying garden day is on the 10th of May. Not my... Uh, first idea of how to do it but anyway <laughs> that's all fine and i've made a flower crown for my dog i'm just going to throw myself into it sure it, and i do think it's really important i think that uh people will when this is over people will be desperate for greenery and gardens and yes. and nature in general um so garden day i think is a good thing to stand behind and i'm you know i'm very happy very happy to do that 
uh, and I'm very happy to do podcasts or talks like this. I spoke with a wonderful woman who might still be on here called Mabel, who is in, in um, Cape Town. And we talked about flowers in Africa and just the, the whole state of sustainability in Africa. And that was, that was amazing. That was, you know, such, such, a, such a wonderful thing that the internet can do for you. Just to, to, to narrow the world down like that. It is. Really. And, and I think especially, you know, because there's so many big cities that, you know, we can't go to a garden right now or we can't do, um, you know, there's so many things we can't do. But to be able Absolutely. to, you know, just connect with people in their homes or gardens, um, I'm really excited about it. I'm going to have to check it out. Maybe we can post some links Dude. once I figure all that out. Um, yeah, yeah, and I will be posting on my Instagram, I will be posting in the next few days more news about that. And I mean, what I have been posting on my Instagram is the flowers in my garden and just and then the words and things as they come up. And I hope people are enjoying that because to me, that's what's making me feel re refreshed and inspired. And you think that's why I do flowers. Right. It is that the joy of, you know, seeing that one unusual thing like the auriculars. They have given me such pleasure. I can't tell you such pleasure. And I look at them every day. I haven't been able to do that in my whole life. <laughs> because I've not been in my garden. <laughs> or the and fertile day, area. I know. It's just, um, it's just, uh, so there are many godsends in the middle of it, all the horror. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Shane, it's been just really great to connect with you. And I appreciate your time and taking the time oh, to do this. Lovely. Um, for anyone who uh, is late to the game, uh, Mr. Shane Conley, we had him back in season two. And you can go back and listen to his episode. It's <laughs> season obvious. two, it sounds like The Crown, doesn't it? Season two of The Crown. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, hello. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when in Rome. <laughs> Maybe not my best thing to say. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Anyway, thank you so much, Shane. It's so appreciate it. Take Pleasure. care. We didn't, we didn't ask if they had any questions, but if anybody has any questions, send them to either of us on our Instagrams and we will answer them. That'll be fine. We're going to post some links and some other things. We're also going to probably try to have this as a video that we can reshare. So if people who come to it late or didn't need to see it all at some point, they'll Brilliant. be able to see it. So Brilliant. anyway, all Thank right. You. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well. You too.